Greetings. Welcome to our fifth episode of the FGI podcast. My name is Tim Stark, and I'm a professor of civil engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Hi, everybody. My name is Jen Miller, and I'm the coordinator of the FGI. On today's episode, we are going to focus in on geomembrane terminology. Okay, let's get started. Let's dig right in. Tim, you you recently wrote an article about geomembrane nomenclature. What is the confusion about? The article is in Geosynthetics Magazine, volume 37, number two. It's the June-July issue of 2019 on pages 8 through 11 in the magazine, and it's co-authored by Ed Silver of E-Squared. The confusion deals with terminology for the plasticizer and the resulting geomembrane that's created by mixing the plasticizer with PVC resin. Okay, so what geomembranes use a plasticizer? Generally, PVC geomembranes are the one that's most referred to when plasticizers are added and discussed. And what that does is make the rigid PVC plastic flexible so it can be used in a geosynthetic or containment application. Gotcha. For which geomembranes is this terminology important? Again, the PVC geomembranes is really where the focus is on the confusion and the use of plasticizer. The problem with the terminology is with this new plasticizer, it's usually referred to as KEE or Elvaloy. Elvaloy is the trade name for KEE, which is the ketone ethylene ester, KEE. It's available under the trade name Elvaloy. KEE was invented by DuPont in the 70s, actually the 60s. The patent for the plasticizer expired in 1973. So that's all the easy part. The hard part is if you add KEE plasticizer to a PVC resin, the resulting geomembrane can be called an EIA or an EIP geomembrane. They mean exactly the same polymer, but they have two different names. So what is EIA and EIP? EIA is ethylene interpolymer alloy, and EIP is ethylene interpolymer. So they mean the same polymer, but there are these two different names for a PVC resin mixed with a KEE plasticizer. Now, if that's not confusing <laughs> enough, um, PVC with KEE is also referred to as an Elvaloy geomembrane because the trade name for KEE is Elvaloy. So a PVC plasticized with KEE could be referred to as one, an EIA geomembrane, two, an EIP geomembrane, or three, an Elvaloy geomembrane. They all mean the same thing. Okay. So what are current geomembrane plasticizer requirements? That's a really good question and why this makes this terminology so important. As I mentioned, if PVC resin is not plasticized with the addition of a plasticizer, it's a rigid plastic like you see for PVC pipe. So the plasticizer is important and the molecular weight of the plasticizer is really the important aspect of the plasticizer. In general, the larger the molecular weight, the larger the molecule for the plasticizer, and thus the harder it is for the plasticizer to migrate from the geomembrane. So that means 
the geomembrane will remain flexible for its entire lifetime instead of becoming very rigid or hard if the plasticizer migrates. So to make sure that people were using the right plasticizer and making sure that PVC geomembranes would last a long time, the FGI in 2004 added a minimum plasticizer molecular weight requirement to the PVC geomembrane specification. That specification requires that the weighted average plasticizer molecular weight is greater than 400 grams per mole. So that's the current requirement for plasticizers in PVC geomembranes. Then KEE plasticizer became popular and, and has infiltrated the market, the geomembrane market, and it differs significantly from the existing plasticizers because KEE is actually a solid plasticizer instead of a liquid plasticizer. And the molecular weight of KEE is around 100,000 grams per mole to 250,000 grams per mole. So that's about 500 or 250 times greater at least than what's now required by the PVC geomembrane specification that was developed by the FGI. Great. What applications are these geomembranes suited for? The KEE, EIA, EIP, and Elvaloid geomembranes are now applicable in any civil engineering application. They're very flexible, they're very durable, and they can withstand a range of environments because of this high molecular weight plasticizer. And that includes some difficult, difficult applications such as exposed geomembranes where there's no cover on top of it so it could be used for an exposed landfill cover for example or a floating cover for a water reservoir so it's really not sensitive to UV or ultraviolet exposure. Hydrocarbons or oil and gas products, diesel products or diesel fuel, so a very wide range of harsh applications are still suitable for a EIA or KEE geomembrane. Excellent. Do, is there anything else you'd like to add about uh, this geomembrane nomenclature topic? Of course, I'd like to add one last thing. Of course, with advantages comes disadvantages. And the main disadvantage of a KEE or Elvaloid geomembrane is they're a little more expensive than the typical PVC geomembrane because the KEE plasticizer is more expensive than the normal phthalate plasticizer that has a molecular weight of around 400 versus KEE that has a molecular weight around 10,000 grams per mole. So that's a disadvantage. They, they are more expensive, but in these challenging environments or applications, the cost can be justified. All right, good to know. And I just wanted to mention that the um, terminology article and the FGI's PVC specification that were both referenced by Tim in this podcast are available to download for free from the FGI website, which is www.fabricatedgeomembrane.com. Okay, great. Thanks, Jen. And if you have any questions or would like ad additional information, please email me at fabricatedgeomembrane at gmail.com or visit the FGI website at, at fabricatedgeomembrane.com. So we'll end with our usual tagline, or at least my usual tagline. <laughs> Quality installed faster when you factory fabricate first. And may all your geomembranes be factory fabricated. Take care, everybody. Talk to you next time. Bye.